In the opening scene, we are taken to a secluded and distant forest compound, which is owned by a polygamist sect. The community's revered leader, known as the Shepherd, is the sole male figure, and the women in the group worship him, expressing gratitude for accepting them as his wives. Come with me inside the deluded mind of a daydreaming Andrew Tate. Within this cult, the women are categorized into two groups, the daughters dressed in various shades of blue, and the wives dressed in reddish hues. The community's main activities involve raising lambs for sustenance and sacrificial rituals. The scene then shifts to the shepherd having a meal together with all of his wives and daughters. After finishing his food, he selects one of his wives to spend the night with. The next morning, the shepherd, accompanied by all of his wives and daughters, gathers in a courtyard. While delivering a sermon, one of the daughters named Sila remains fixated on him without even blinking. She appears to have a strong admiration towards the shepherd. After after the sermon, they engage in prayer, during which the shepherd dips his hand into the blood of a sacrificed lamb and smears it on the faces of his wives and daughters. Later on, as Sila and her friend Tamar are standing in the woods, they are captivated by the shepherd's presence from a distance. In particular, Sila wants to have a private conversation with him, so she cleverly sends her friend to attend to some household tasks. After this, Sila walks with the shepherd, who compliments her beauty and draws parallels between her charm and that of her deceased mother, who passed away during her birth. In response, Sila asks how he met her mother in the first place. She is curious if they were involved in a romantic relationship. However, instead of answering her question, the shepherd playfully touches her hair and tries to get closer to her. But at the last second, he swiftly changes the subject and requests Sila to rebraid her hair before they part ways. Later that day, one of the wives named Eloise shares a romantic story with Sila and another daughter. She explains that she had an intense coitus session with the shepherd. Upon hearing this, Sila, who harbors affection for the shepherd, becomes envious and responds to Eloise in a harsh manner. The other daughter intervenes, reminding Sila that they are not permitted to speak to the wives with such a tone. Nonetheless, Sila denies this rule, arguing that Eloise is of the same age as them. Shortly after, another wife enters the scene, and the daughter reports Sila's rude behavior to Eloise. As a consequence, Sila is assigned the task of delivering leftover food food to a small, dimly lit hut where menstruating women are secluded due to the belief that they are impure. Inside the hut, Sila encounters two unhealthy women and engages in a conversation with one of them named Sarah. The latter, whose chest bears scars, warns Sila about the shepherd's acts of violence. She asserts that once Sila enters the menstrual cycle, the shepherd will treat her in the worst possible way. However, Sila dismisses the warning as she still perceives the shepherd to be a good person. The same night, as she is putting her younger sisters to bed, she looks out the window and notices the shepherd engaging in romance with one of his wives. This makes her really jealous, but she can't do anything about it. In the morning, the wives assist the shepherd in bathing, and one of them informs him that a new lamb is about to take birth. In another room, two other wives help Sila clean herself because she is going to be with the shepherd soon. It is then revealed that the lamb mentioned by the wives earlier is none other than Sila herself. In the next scene, we see Sila sitting alone in the peaceful fields, eventually drifting off into sleep. She awakens to the sound of lambs nearby and rises to investigate. To her dismay, she discovers one of the lambs severely injured and on the brink of death, bleeding profusely. In a distressing turn of events, Sila realizes that she too is bleeding. Troubled by this revelation, she examines herself later that night but doesn't find any answers. She can't even fall asleep due to the continuous bleeding. Leading. Tamar, who is by Sila's side, notices her distress and inquires about what happened. Sila makes up a story, stating that she dozed off in the field, during which a wild dog attacked and killed one of the lambs. She goes on to say that the wives took her to the shepherd, who generously forgave her for the incident. The following night, Sila is jolted by the sound of a police car's siren, prompting her to peep through the window. Overhearing a conversation between a police officer and the shepherd, she learns that their group must evacuate the premises. The officer grants them a limited amount of time to comply or else they will have to face legal actions. In response, the shepherd gathers all his wives and daughters the next morning to deliver the sad news. He explains that they must leave their current location to avoid the potential destruction brought by the outside world, which could tear them apart. He also announces his intention to lead them in search of a new home. This revelation saddens Sila, and while she is sitting alone, the shepherd approaches her, offering words of encouragement 
encouragement and emphasizing the importance of her strength for the sake of the numerous young daughters who depend on her. Following this, the cult assembles with their belongings and engages in a collective prayer before embarking on a long journey in search of their new home. They travel through forests and mountains, walking for an entire day until they reach a spot where they decide to camp and spend the night in the woods. During that night, Sila experiences a nightmare, envisioning herself immersed in water alongside two other daughters. She also witnesses the shepherd slitting the throat of a lamb. Early in the morning, they resume their journey, and after a considerable duration, they stumble upon an abandoned house. Sila and some other women enter to inspect the premises, but the shepherd declares that they cannot stay there because it is a broken house made by broken people. As a result, they set their tents outside the house, preparing for another night in the open sky. The following morning, Sila displays signs of illness, vomiting, and appearing unwell. Later on, she secretly examines the blood on her thighs, only to be noticed by one of the daughters. This makes the latter scream in fear, and she shouts that Sila has become impure. As a result, the poor girl is compelled to join a group of banished wives. Anybody else feeling that this is basically just a ripoff of Toy Story? That evening, Sila engages in conversation with Sarah, who discloses that she was one of the shepherd's first two wives. The other one was none other than Sila's mother. Sarah explains that, initially, the shepherd used to show her favor, but now he has become rude and hostile to her. He always punished her for no reason. When Sila expresses skepticism, Sarah compares the shepherd's attention to the sun, initially radiant and glorious, but eventually causing them to burn. As their conversation continues, Sarah reveals the truth to Sila that her mother did not die during her birth, but rather succumbed to an infection a few days later. She explains that the shepherd did not take her to the hospital, viewing it as a test of her faith and resulting in her death from sepsis. Furthermore, Sarah admits that she no longer holds faith in the shepherd, but still stays in the cult due to a lack of alternatives and fear of being alone. In the next scene, the cult continues their journey alongside a country road. During this, Sila catches sight of a passing car with three people inside. She fantasizes herself within the vehicle, dressed like a regular teenager, which brings her to tears. That night, they all make camp at a certain spot, and while they have their dinner, Sila gazes at a pregnant Eloise, who also stares back at her while gently caressing her belly. The next day, during the difficult hike, Eloise suddenly goes into labor. The other wives believe it is time for birth, but Eloise is unable to gather the courage to do so. She fears that the baby will die in this treacherous environment. However, when the other wives force her, she pushes hard and eventually gives birth. In the process, though, she sadly loses her own life. After the incident, the group prepares for Eloise's funeral, during which Sarah confronts the shepherd and holds him accountable for the woman's demise. She even addresses him by his real name, Michael. However, the shepherd dismisses her accusations and walks away. After the funeral, Sarah confides in Sila, informing her that she and Eloise's baby are departing from the cult. She reveals that the shepherd wants the newly born infant to die, believing that the baby is somehow flawed. Sila struggles to comprehend the shepherd's reasoning and Sarah discloses that it is because the infant is a boy, and the shepherd does not want any other males in the cult other than himself. With this, Sarah bids farewell to Sila and departs from the group. The remaining members of the community continue following the shepherd's lead, although exhaustion looms over them after days of non-stop walking. Later, they take a short break and sit on the ground to rest. At that moment, Tamar points out a potential location, suggesting that they explore it. But this only enrages Shepherd, as he believes that no other leader should exist aside from himself. In a fit of rage, he kicks and physically assaults Tamar. Witnessing this brutal act, Sila's trust in the shepherd begins to crumble, and she recalls Sarah's earlier warnings about him. And he seemed so nice until now. After a long and arduous journey, they finally reach a forested valley with a large lake, which the shepherd proclaims to be their new sacred place. This makes the women somewhat happy, as they are tired to death. In the evening, the shepherd performs a rebaptism ritual, submerging the older daughters beneath the water. When it comes to Sila's turn, the shepherd forcefully holds her underwater for an extended period. In that moment, Sila has a vision of him attempting to drown her. That's not a vision, Sila. That is, that's happening to you right now. Later, while gathered around the campfire, the wives abstain from dinner, explaining that they are fasting in preparation for an upcoming ritual the next day. During the same night, the daughters are sleeping in a tent when the shepherd summons Sila to his own tent. Tamar warns her not to go, but Sila disregards the advice. Once inside the shepherd's tent, he instructs her to lie
lie down. He proceeds to touch Sila's body and forcefully assaults her. After satisfying his desires, he bids her good night and departs. Unfortunately, this leaves a deep scar in Sila's mind, and she envisions a scenario in which all the daughters unite to overthrow and kill the shepherd. The following morning, the daughters wake up only to discover that all the wives are missing. In search of their mothers, they head down to the lake where they find the shepherd kneeling near the discarded robes of the wives. When they inquire about the whereabouts of their mothers, the shepherd says that they have ascended into a new existence. And now it is the daughter's duty to take their place. He singles out Sila, designating her as his wife. However, Sila fearlessly confronts him, claiming that he is not their shepherd, and she does not want his grace. This enrages the shepherd, prompting him to smack her. But in a shocking act of defiance, she stands her ground and slaps his ass back. In the aftermath of these events, two police officers discover the dead bodies of the wives, washed ashore on the lake's edge. Shocked, they venture deep into the woods to find more clues. Clues, I mean. To their horror, they discover the lifeless body of the shepherd, suspended between two trees, adorned with ram's horns placed on his head like a fawn. In the final scene, the daughters gather together at a waterfall, while Sila cradles a baby lamb in her arms. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.